In today's video, we're taking a look at how to install a battery balancer for your solar system. Easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video. We're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and noticed that your batteries are out of balance. Don't worry, here at the Satterbox team, we've got your back. A boat right away, but a back is a back. So today, we're taking a look at the most controversial topic on the solar battery world, other than, let's skip that one. But you know here at the Satterbox team, we run towards hard and chaos. Is it do as you can see one of our battery is at 14.23 and our other battery is at 14.15 volts So to put an example, let's say with our batteries We have eco worthy batteries according to the manufacturer when using more than one battery connected to each other You don't want them to have a maximum difference in voltage of 0.1 and this is usually fixed by charging both batteries to a 100% and then connecting them together. But let's say even if they drift off a little bit during the year by charging them to 100% at least once every six months or once a year, by doing this, this would keep the batteries balanced or in a close enough voltage during the six months or one year period. This is why checking your battery's voltage individually once in a while, it's always a good idea. Having batteries out of balance can cause cells to wear and degrade rate at an accelerated rate. And an example is, so this could mean, let's say when one battery charges to 100%, the other can be an 80%. Or let's say when one discharges to 0%, the other one could still be at 20%. And this is why when connecting batteries together, you want to have them of the same type of battery, the same voltage, the same amp hours, the same manufacturer, and even better to have them of the same age. Usually recommended a minimum of three months apart or in some max cases a max of six months to one year but let's say in your case you charge each battery individually to a hundred percent you let them rest according to the voltage and app hours of your particular battery for an example lithium batteries usually have a resting voltage of 13.6 and sometimes after charge it can take from a few hours to sometimes up to 72 hours for it to reach that voltage that's why let Letting your battery rest after charging is always a good idea. And let's say also after you charge them, you connected them in parallel so they could balance between each other. This could take a few hours or a few days and it still didn't help or one of the batteries is degraded more than the other or you're outside the manufacturer's warranty or no matter what case or situation you're in because every situation may differ. We did reach out to EcoWorthy to see what to do in this situation and they said that adding a balancer is the way to go. Even though that our batteries are well balanced and have no need for a balancer, and for us, what worked was charging them, letting them rest to get close to resting voltage, and then placing them in parallel for 24 hours. If you have any tips on how you balance your batteries, you can leave comments on the comment section below. But now that we filled your brain with data, we're ready for the install. In this particular case, we're using the Victron battery balancer. We'll leave links on the description so this particular one is not a smart device it does not connect via bluetooth but we do have four led displays the top one for on or standby the second one for high voltage on upper battery the next one high voltage on the lower battery and the last one an alarm at the bottom we have our wires entry points we have to the left the positive wire on the middle we have the common and on the right side we have the negative wire and optional on the middle you can wire in a reset button Button, and to the right you can wire in an alarm this particular device turns on at 27.3 volts and this is where you get the green LED indicator it turns off at 26.6 volts according to the manufacturer also for this install we're gonna need inline fuses on each wire going to the battery and according to the manufacturer we should use a 10 amp fuse on each of the three wires and because the last thing you want on a clear sunny day 
today is to die or have the smell of barbecue on non barbecue day, the first thing that we want to do is turn off our inverter. If we have any switches that provide energy to the inverter, we want to go ahead and turn that off. Next, we want to turn off our solar panel or cover them. If you have a disconnect switch or a breaker, we want to go ahead and turn that off. And lastly, we want to turn off our charge controller. If you have a breaker or switch for that, we want to turn that off. And remember, a pro tip when turning off your system, the last one you want to turn off is your charge controller. And if you're reconnecting your system, the first one you want to turn on is your charge controller. This would help protect your system and avoid future headaches in the future, the day after tomorrow, later on. And now we're ready for the install, for real this time. The first thing that we're going to do is create the wires that we're going to use to connect from the Victron battery balancer to our battery. Remember, we're also going to place the inline fuse on the wire ends. According to the manufacturer, we should use 0.75 millimeters wire thickness gauge, which according to the interwebs is 19 gauge. And this gauge size would be enough for the Victron battery balancer because it only has a current draw maximum of one amp. And according to the manufacturer, when the charger voltage of a 24 volt battery system increases to more than 27.3 volts, the battery balancer will turn on and compare the voltage over the two series connected batteries. And if needed, it would draw a current of 0.7 amps from the battery with the highest voltage. But in this case, we're using 16 gauge wire, which can handle up to 10 amps. And we chose that number because according to the manufacturer, each wire should have an inline fuse of 10 amps. And remember, you have to consider the run of your wire as well for gauge sizes. You can always verify on the internet for wire gauge calculators that you can use for your particular case. To strip the wires, we're using the clean self-adjusting wire stripper and cutter 11061. We'll leave links on the description of the video. Once we have the wires cut to size and strip, we can use two methods to splice them together. And for this, we're going to use in insulated terminals, we're going to use the, the eye crimp ratcheting crimping tool. This particular one did come with 285 pieces of insulated terminals. It brought butt, spades, and ring connectors. The first way we're going to see how to make the connection, we're going to use a bullet male and a spade female. And what we do is crimp each of the ends and then do a push in manual connection. And to secure that everything is well in there and making sure that nothing's going to move, we can place a heat shrink over the connection or even electrical tape to have a seal tight connection. Because the last thing you want after all that work is to start installing wires wires and noticing them come apart. And we'll use our Porter cable heat gun to make the seal. Our second method would be using a butt splice. And when using this, what you want to do is insert both stripped wires on each of the sides. And then with your crimping tool, crimp in the middle. We like to crimp a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, a little bit in the middle as well, just to make sure that in all three places it's tight in there. And to make sure that nothing's going anywhere, we like to place a heat shrink over the connection. We even like to go as far as placing electrical tape around the heat shrink just to make sure that everything is good. And because according to the manufacturer, each wire needs a 10 amp fuse, we will go ahead and add that now. And that would usually be the red fuse. And now with the magic of TV, or our three wires are connected to inline fuses. So now that we have our middle connection, we're going to work on our end connection. On one end, we're going to place an optional furrow and on the other side we're going to add an insulated terminal which in this case is a ring terminal and when crimping your insulated terminal you want to make sure that you match the color of your insulated terminal connector to your crimps tool opening exact color and on this particular crimping tool you're going to notice three colors red blue and yellow red is for 16 to 22 gauge blue from 14 to 16 and yellow from 10 to 12. in this particular insulated terminal connector already has heat shrink at the end different from the other one which was a harder plastic next we're going to install our ferrules and we're also going to use the eye crimp ferrule crimping tool from 10 gauge to 23 gauge this particular one came with a kit of 770 ferrule connectors we'll leave links for every tool that we use on the video and this is pretty easy to install you just insert the connector take your ratcheting tool place it 
on the silver part and squeeze. It would automatically adjust to the size of ferrule that you're using. And remember, adding a ferrule is optional. You can always connect the strip wire directly to your battery balancer wire receiver terminal. And now with the magic of TV, or I mean laptop, cell phone, tablet, smart device, you get what I mean. We have all our wires done and we're ready for the next step. And that first step is we want to locate our solar system because the last thing you want is to work on your neighbor's one. Next, you want to find the location where you're going to install it. In this particular case, we're going to place it to the side closest to the battery. We're going to use our high grade ultra coated battery balancer screws, AKA drywall screws and install our battery balancer on this sheet of plywood. We want to make sure that all the screws are open before starting to work. And for installing the wires on the Victron battery balancer, there's no specific way or order to install it. But for our next step, there would be. So we're just going to start in physical order. We're going to start with our positive 24 volt, then our midpoint or common and finish off installing our negative wire. And always remember the ancient technique passed down generation to generation of lefty loosey righty tighty. Once you feed it tight, that's good enough. And a pro tip, whenever inserting and tightening wires, you always want to come back a day after using the system and verify that all your wires are tight, held in place. So that's why after installing each wire, we always want to do the pull test to make sure that it is snug in there. And now comes the most important part of the whole video. According to the manufacturer, we do have to install the wires to the battery in a certain order. So first we install the negative wire coming from our battery balancer to the negative of one battery. And remember when installing the wire to your battery balancer, you want to make sure that the side with the inline fuse is the one that you leave to connect to the battery. Because according to the manufacturer, you want to have the fuse closest to the battery. Next, we're going to install our positive wire coming from our battery balancer to the positive of the other battery. And lastly, according to the manufacturer, we should install our midpoint or our common wire. And according to the manufacturer, this could be installed on any of the sides of our common connection. So you can choose to connect it on the left side or on the right side. We chose the right side for no particular reason. And now you've done it. Your battery balancer is connected. We're ready for the next step. Now we can go ahead and turn on our system. The first thing that we're gonna do is turn on the switch that provides energy to our charge controller or breaker. Next, we're going to turn on our inverter or switch that provides energy to our inverter. And lastly, we're going to turn on our breaker for our solar panel or turn on our solar disconnect or both if need be. And remember, the battery balancer, it's only going to turn on when it sees a voltage of 27.3. In this particular case, we're receiving charge from our solar panel, so it is on, but on the standby mode. Because because our batteries are balanced. As you can see, our battery voltage in one battery is 13.58 and our other battery is 13.57, well within the 0.1 voltage that the manufacturer recommends. And now you've done it. You can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Now you become the battery balancer of your town. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone Someone on the Statterbox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a link to our latest video.